today we will start uh, lecture 21 and the course is corrosion protection methods and the broad topic what we are uh, discussing is material aspect for corrosion protection. And uh, in the last lecture, we started uh, the philosophy for selection of material for a particular corrosive medium. Now, we also realize that uh, there are several forms of corrosion like in general uh, uniform as well as localized and there could be uh, pitting, there could be crevice which fall in localized, localized pattern of corrosion. There could be uh, intergranular corrosion, there could be stress effect, there could be de-alloying. So, for all those forms, the material selection also uh, becomes bit stringent. In fact, what we have noticed that the relation between corrosivity as well as uh, materials resistance to corrosion and we can have a plot uh, for, uh, for a protection or a, a acceptable limit of failure and then we can decide what materials can be selected. But it is very important that as uh, this particular graph or this definition of corrosivity as well as the corrosion resistance as well as the acceptable limit, those are uh, uh, if we if we cannot define them properly, then this graph cannot be generated. So, that time uh, the selection becomes more uh, conservative okay? and uh, we have to go for a better alloy systems for having protection. For example, in localized attack system, in case of localized attack uh, case, we have to have better systems, uh, mainly pitting as well as crevice. So, we will continue our discussion. So, our discussion point would be uh, on the materials aspect of corrosion protection, but we will talk about the selection of uh, materials. So, now we see that we have different forms in general that can be categorized into two broad groups. So, forms of corrosion and that can be categorized into two broad groups. One is uniform and then or sometime it is called it called it is called general corrosion and then another word is localized corrosion under localized corrosion so we can have pitting as well as crevice and it can also have uh, intergranular fine it can have uh, cavitation it can have uh, a kind of a macro scale localized uh, mode like uh, fretting because the fretting happens like one particular system where fretting happens is basically the a railway system, a railroad, where wherever we have a fist plate, so there we can have fretting attack. So, these are some examples. Okay. So, for our discussion, we let us consider only general corrosion and pitting and crevice and decide what material can be uh, suitable for them. Now, if we understand those corrosion attack pattern, we will see that one of the major reasons uh, may be uh, a common reason for all uh, to start that process is basically galvanic corrosion. So, the common reason most of the cases it can be micro galvanic cell or macro galvanic cell because corrosion is nothing but the galvanic uh, attack of a of a of a of a of an active component in a uh, in a system so now when we consider the form of corrosion like uniform the galvanic corrosion happens statistically over the entire surface uniformly okay so then we cannot decide uh, which point would attack more and which at point would attack less so uh, finally we get almost uniform attack pattern 
across the whole surface, but the start point is galvanic corrosion. So, that means, where we have one noble component, one active component and we have connection between these two. So, typically even if we consider pitting or crevice, in fact, uh, during the formation stage of pitting as well as crevice, different aeration cell happens in the pit or in the crevice part. So, the crevice or pit part becomes anodic and the rest of the surrounding surface metal surfaces would become cathodic. So, again that galvanic effect the localized galvanic effect comes into picture. So, now whenever we talk about those formation initial formation part. So, let us understand galvanic one, galvanic one I mean to say two metal corrosion. So, sometime it is also called two metal corrosion. Now, in a component we can have one part as anode and one part as cathode. Okay. So, they can be joined by welding or fastened by screw uh, fastened by bolts or rivet. Okay. So, like let us say I have steel plate. So, these are my steel plate I can have a rivet. Okay. So, that time this particular thing let us say this is uh, stainless steel and let us say this is the rivet is stainless steel and the material which are fastened they are made of then carbon steel. So, that means, wherever they are joined so, this part, this part, this part all those junction points they are actually a typical galvanic zone where corrosion of the active component happens aggressively. So, here this becomes active and this becomes passive or noble and it does not mean a noble means it is basically it will act as cathode and this will act as anode. And remember cathode does not means that the cathodic reaction would be the deposition of its own metal ion. In fact, most of the cases the cathodic reaction could be oxygen reduction or hydrogen reduction or metal ion reduction other than that metal made of uh, that metal. Uh, uh, that particular uh, composition of the uh, of that rivet. Okay. So, so then whenever we have this cathode and anode system, we have galvanic corrosion of that active uh, part. So, your corrosion would happen in this zone. These are the zone where corrosion of plain carbon steel would happen. and the corrosion and uh, cathode part the stainless steel part can be protected. So, when so I, we talk about this kind of system where the uh, two metal corrosion becomes uh, very evident and another case is even in fact, we have seen uh, the corrosion intergranular corrosion for sensitized stainless steel. We see that the grain boundary where the precipitation of carbide happens chromium carbide happens. So, that particular portion would act as cathode and then just little away from that grain boundary zone we have chromium depleted portion and the rest of the grain bodies will also have high chromium content. So, that a narrow part 
by the side of that grain boundary where chromium carbide precipitation has happened. So, that part will act as cathode uh, anode and rest of the material will act as cathode. So, so then it is a typical galvanic corrosion which would lead to intergranular pattern okay. and it actually has one more criteria for the galvanic effect to uh, exist a galvanic effect to make a serious damage because it has a narrow anode portion or area and a large cathode portion. So, which is uh, uh, absolute no no from the design consideration. Okay. So, whenever we have such kind of situation, so that joining can be in the form of welding or bolts or rivets, that time we should see that what is the position of that two metals or alloys in the galvanic series created in that particular medium. In fact, galvanic series can be made in different medium. Okay. For example, if we consider fresh water, and if we consider sea water and let us say our condition is ambient atmospheric condition. Okay. So, we can generate one galvanic series here and the galvanic series for sea water could be different. We know that every medium can have galvanic series and in galvanic series is basically distribution of metals and alloys as per the current flow. Okay. For example, in a medium, let us say we have a medium fresh water, I have put one metal like metal 1, another metal, metal 2. So, this is in the electrolyte, this is fresh water let us say. So, if we make a joining between these two metals, if current flows in the external conductor through this the electrical current, then definitely this becomes positive, this becomes negative and in the galvanic corrosion concept this becomes cathode and this becomes anode. So, then in the fresh water if we would like to put them in in a series pattern. So, then I can put the active component at the bottom as we go down active component comes up on top we have noble and the noble one becomes cathode and the active one becomes anode. So, since the current is flowing from metal 1 to metal 2. I can put metal 1 on top and metal 2 at the bottom. So, that way we can generate this series. Similarly, in sea water we can actually do this simple experiment and get the series. In fact, we can also have the potential EMF generated on a particular electrode or metal and that means, we can have EMF let us say this is EMF, let us say this is E 2, this is let us say E 1 individual EMF we can also find a difference between these two. So, that becomes daily which is difference between E 1 because when it is cathode that means, it must be having a higher potential and we talk about reduction potential. So, this particular potential difference becomes my anodic index. So, that means, this can cathodic series can be uh, this galvanic series can be quantitative when we mention this anodic index. Fine. So, that way we can generate this two galvanic series. Now, if the corrosivity of the medium is not aggressive, okay, if it is a kind of a mild, mildly corrosive or low corrosivity, then we can actually go ahead with materials 
which are sitting uh, little little wider apart in the series fine for example if we talk about fresh water system let's say i talk about steel aluminum i can talk about cadmium lead okay and let's say talk about atmospheric corrosion so when when we have moisture plus O2, if that is the condition. So, that time even if we have connection between these two or these two or these two or these two, we would see that. So, that particular couple all those couples would not have much of detrimental effect. So, they can be all having all couples and I can say galvanic couple couples can work without much of problem, because it is a mildly corrosive. Okay. So, this is that time the position of that particular steel in the series would not matter much. But as the corrosivity goes up, let us say in case of sea water, in case of sea water, so this is highly corrosive, compared to atmospheric moisture plus oxygen uh, uh, atmospheric corrosion. So, that time the selection, this is very important, selection becomes restrictive or conservative. What I mean by this selective or conservative? Now, in a series for example, let us say we have m 1, m 2, m 3, m 4, these are four uh, metals that are present. Yeah, so, that we are considering and the topmost let us say has a potential let us say E 1, E 2, E 3, E 4. So, those are the individual EMF that is generated on those metals in sea water. Okay. So, now we can actually can calculate what will be my anodic index, this is EMF, individual EMF in that solution. So, anodic index So, anodic index is nothing but the highest position in that series. So, E 1 minus minus that the next level of EMF. So, this becomes 0. So, then the next one is E 1 minus E 2 some value let us say its value is 0 0.15 E 1 minus E 3 let us say this anodic index becomes 0 0.25 volt all are in volt. So, this is also volt and the last one which is E 1 minus E 4 it becomes 0 point let us say 5 volt. Now, interestingly if we consider that the allowable anodic index if we have joining between two different metals, if that allowable allowable anodic index should be uh, let us say 0 0.25 if we consider that. So, then if we have in a particular component if we have m 1 then that can be connected to m 2 or m 3, because till m 3 I can see that this anodic index value is actually within that acceptable limit. So, here I am considering acceptable limit for anodic equal to 0 0.25 volt. Now, 
as this particular potential difference increases because of this connection of two different metals in a particular series, the current that can be drawn from the anodic part and the anodic part is what the metal which is sitting below. So, that current could be very high and if that current becomes very high definitely the corrosion rate of that anodic component also would be very high. So, that is what you have to go for if you cannot avoid joining two metals in many components we cannot exist it that components cannot exist without having different metal parts of different potential or different EMF in particular electrolyte. So, that time we have to see that, that the acceptable limit for anodic index does not cross that uh, that anodic index after joining these two metals different metals that should not cross the acceptable limit. And here we have put acceptable limit as 0 0.25 volt that the difference between two EMFs in that particular solution. I could see that metal 1 metal this one also because the difference between these two and these two would be 10. Okay. So, with com compared to M 2 the M 3 would have anodic index of 0 0.1 okay, which is the difference between 0 0.25 minus uh, 0.15 and so that means, I can connect this two, I can connect this two, I can connect this two even uh, I think all those connections we have considered. So, all those connections are possible without much of corrosion damage of the anodic component. But I cannot connect M4 with M1 as well as M2. At least let us understand with reference to M1. Say M1 cannot be connected to M4 because the anodic index for M4 with reference to M1 is 0.5, which is beyond the acceptable limit, which is 0.25. So, that means whenever we have this connection between M1 and M4 the dissolution rate of M power could be extremely high, which cannot withstand the long duration operation of that component in a particular medium. Okay. So, that is the importance of the selection with reference to the galvanic series in that particular electrolyte and every electrolyte can have a separate series. So, now if we see if it is a aggressive solution highly corrosive, so that time selection becomes restrictive that selection means selection of two metals or two alloys. For example, in case of sea water if I try to consider aluminum, aluminum alloys that can only be connected to aluminum alloys. Okay. It cannot be connected to even uh, stainless steel or iron. Okay. So, aluminum alloy should be connected to aluminum or aluminum alloy can be cast or wrought okay. So, that means you see that only we have to select from the same category of material in that galvanic series, but in case of mildly corrosive I can see that even if we connect steel with aluminum or cadmium with lead or the lead with steel or lead with aluminum it would not be a matter they can serve well for long duration. So, that is the very concept of this galvanic application of galvanic series and selection. So, when we try to select we have to also look at two things one is galvanic series or position first is position of the materials in galvanic series second one is corrosivity of the medium And the third one is acceptable anodic index.
in that solution. Fine. And so then it can lead to proper choice of materials which can be more choice of materials to minimize galvanic effect. Okay. So, this is very important. Now, once we understand galvanic effect, let us say I know what are the materials to be connected. Now, then comes the forms. So, if we consider only the general attack pattern okay, or uniform. So, that means, if you have this material, the corrosion would be more or less uniform thickness all the places. So, that means, thickness at this place of that corrosion layer and here it is not about the passive zone. Let us say this all those material that shaded portion. So, this is the portion which is actually dissolving with time and you see everywhere every cross section I have almost about the similar thickness. So, that is called uniform. So, when it is uniform first of all the evaluation of corrosion as well as monitoring becomes easy. Second part is selection becomes also easy. If we know the allowable corrosion rate. So, if we consider let us say mild steel or plain carbon steel, generally the uh, corrosion rate in most of the situation like fresh water or even sea water, the corrosion rate uh, is fair, the uniform corrosion rate is fairly uh, low around 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, sometime it can go to 0 0.25 millimeter per year. So, this corrosion rate can be measured via two formulas, one is weight loss. So, in case of weight loss, if it is weight loss, this is weight loss divided by area divided by time and divided by the density. Okay. So, this is the corrosion rate and where it is in terms of length by time. Okay. So, here it is millimeter per year or it can be found out by doing polarization experiment, where I know the current density this is corrosion I core into atomic weight, A is atomic weight of the dissolving metal, then I can divide it by n which is the number of electron participating for corrosion reaction or the reduction process into F which is the Faraday's constant into rho which is the density. So, if we consider m n plus plus n e equal to m, so the corrosion is this direction dissolution. So, here this is the n and f is 96500 coulomb per 1 mole of electron charge. So, you can find this corrosion rate. If it is that, then it can be used uh, easily in uh, fresh water system or even if it is uh, sea water that can be used. Now, one thing 
And what is the advantage of plain carbon steel? If you see the advantage, it is low cost. Okay. Easily available. Third is easy processing. When we talk about processing, I am talking about making and then making of steel and then uh, forging, rolling, all are easy in case of mild steel compared to uh, high carbon steel or alloy steels. Now, third or fourth one is easy fabrication. And whenever we talk about this corrosion rate, we are talking about general attack. Okay. So, general attack or uniform attack. Now, these are the advantages of using plain carbon steel when we have a general attack. But if we consider a costly material for a for kind of aggressive solution like let us say we try to find out material for sea water or salt water. So, that case we can use mild steel or let us say plain carbon steel or generally low carbon steel is used low carbon steel or we can go for stainless steel. Let us say I use 304, which is 18 8 stainless steel with a carbon content about 0 0.08 percent and all are in weight percent. So, now in material in sea water, this gives you the uniform attack, which is around 0 0.1 to 0. 2 millimeter per year. And costly material in case of stainless steel, we generally allow if the corrosion rate is 0 0.1 millimeter per year. And in fact, it can show 0 0.1 millimeter per year in sea water. But interestingly, this one always shows a uh, most of the time it shows a general attack. But here the possibility if the sea water is stagnant, there is a possibility of extreme localized attack. Okay. So, then we must not use stainless steel, it is better to use plain carbon steel in sea water application at times, if the attack pattern is general, general, so then or uniform, it can serve better for long years. Okay. So, that means, uh, we should be careful that costly material or costly alloys with a better corrosion resistance, they may not work better in some of the applications. So, like this is a classic example that stainless steel is much more costly than costlier than uh, plain carbon steel, but still in case of stainless steel, there is a possibility of pitting, localized pitting and then it can lead to a serious damage to the particular component. So, this is another point. The point what I would like to mention is checking the severity localized attack. Okay. So, this is important. Now, another important factor which is to be kept in mind, which is contamination. Fine. At times, we do not allow even a small contamination, though the material shows uniform corrosion as well as it shows a sufficient corrosion resistance, but if there is a little bit of contamination in that particular medium which is being stored in that particular container of made of that low cost material, it will have difficulty in pushing that particular fluid 
uh, it will be difficult to sell that particular fluid. For example, if we talk about storing of 93 percent H2SO4, pure H2SO4 and let us say ambient condition, ambient temperature. We can use mild steel, plain carbon steel. Okay. But plain carbon steel when we use that can lead to little bit of iron contamination, because little bit of corrosion and then it can have iron ion and whenever we have iron ion present in that, the color of this particular acid changes, the color becomes little brownish. Okay. So, then this will not be accepted, not accepted. So, that time one should coat it with phenolic coating. Remedy. Okay. So, then it can be avoided. So, this is about uh, the application in, in case of general corrosion, which is bit straightforward and low cost possibilities are there and mostly uh, uh, plain carbon steel or aluminum alloys. So, those can be used in case of system situation, where we have uh, we experience general corrosion, but the application in case of localized corrosion becomes very, very tricky. Okay. So, that part we will discuss in our next lecture. Thank you.